Sick. Thank you once again to long time no see, but old time, old school friend of the show, Dan Starlight. Thank you very much for the Drama Mama intro theme song. Welcome to Drama Mama Investigates. On Drama Mama Investigates, we we basically decide on something that we think is a big piece of drama on the internet, um, almost always unrelated to streaming or anything like that, like I usually talk about, um, and usually loosely political, um, that we talk about. And the goal with our Drama Mamas is to get to the bottom of the situation so that you can be caught up into the loop. And what I try to do is that for most of the time that we do the Drama Mama, we try to be as impartial as possible, which it's a drama show, so keep that in mind. This isn't like a definitive investigation. Never should be considered that. It's a drama investigation. So we do our best. We try to get all the receipts and historically we've done very, very good at that. Then at the very end, I give my personal take on the drama. And in case anybody gets confused, I always tell people that this is my take on the drama so they don't get offended because, you know, um, it's okay when other people say things like, oh, I'm going to have an authoritative position on this, but when I do it, it's somehow bad. Okay? Okay? So, we are going to talk about Pokemon. And you might be like, what the fuck is a Pokemon? Well, Pokemon is this year's Bean Dad. Wait, was Bean Dad this year? Bean Dad wasn't this year, was it? Bean Dad was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, Bean Dad was last year. But guess what? Unfortunately... I think, wait, Bean Dad was this year? Oh, God, it was this year. So it's this year's Bean Dad Part 2. Um, for those of you who don't know what a Bean Dad is, I recognize now that we're getting into the place of the internet where things stop making sense. Bean Dad was a dad who would not feed his child until his child figured out how to, his, like, six-year-old child figured out how to use, a like, a manual crank um, can opener to open the beans and the kid was struggling with it for like six hours and bean dad wrote a like massive post on Twitter like boasting about how good of a dad he was because of like not showing his daughter how to use the bean thing and he was like yeah I'm teaching her by experience and stuff but the daughter was like really hungry and um and yeah a lot of people talked about bean dad I did do one. Yeah, I have a drama mama on Bean Dad. But this is probably more dramatic even than Bean Dad. Because Pokemon is, I gotta say, the Pokemon thing is pretty fucking wild, okay? So let me give you the rundown. Let's go straight to the motherfucking tweets, okay? Uh, and I did back them up, so if they've gone down already, well, guess what? Don't worry about it. We're gonna We're gonna be able to have them. Here we go. Okay? By the way, this was an incredible response to these tweets. Okay? I'm just going to give you this idea. So, the person we're going to be talking about is a person by the name of Liz Mayer. Liz, M-A-I-R. And this person, Scott Russell, responded, Each day on Twitter, there is one main character, and the goal is to never be it. <laughs> and then somebody else responds, This isn't main character on Twitter level. This is main character at CPS level. So that's going to give you a bit of an idea of where we're going with this. <laughs> Things are going to get pretty messy in here. Okay? So here we go. Let's just see. I would prefer to pull this person um, up on Twitter if we can. Oh, I think they've still got it. Okay. Oh, boy. Let's just see. Oh, I think they deleted the tweets. Oh, my God. I think they did it. Hold on. Let's see. I'm just want to, I just want to confirm. No, they didn't. They've left it up. Holy shit. Here's the original tweet. Okay. This person is, uh, Liz Mayer, a calm strategist for, uh, oh, oh no. A Republican national committee, online comms director, a, uh, a Tory, a libertarian arsenal fan worked for Rand Paul and Rick Perry. Ooh, so it is going to get a little political then. I'm not going to say, you know, listen, let's just surpass our judgment, okay? Let's hold our judgment for one second, okay? Let's let's hold it back, okay? Let's take a look at this. 
Liz Mayer says, I have resorted to burning Pokemon cards as a punishment when my kid doesn't do basic stuff he has to do. The basic stuff is eating. He comes home without eating any of his lunch. Card burnt. He doesn't eat enough dinner. Card burnt. Bear in mind, my kid is about five, f four foot and six inches tall at age seven and yet weighs less than 55 pounds. He needs to put some weight on, specifically muscle. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And then we have an immediate an immediate return to talking about Joe Biden. And look at the irony of this. Before tweeting that out, parenting is more important than your job, especially if your job is the Secretary of Transportation. So this is looking pretty bad for Liz right off the bat. Yeah. And, and you know, it's funny. This person also tweeted this. This website is getting to be really boring. I'm starting to consider tweeting deliberately crazy and offensive stuff just to spice it up again. I'm bored, so I'll tweet that I abuse my kid, giving other people really terrible parenting ideas in the meantime just to entertain myself, then act all superior when people accuse me of being a horrible person. I don't think, I don't know about the joke thing here. You know? I don't really... Yeah, it's the old Tim Pool defense. You know how Tim Pool says that he will tweet um, intentionally um, incoherent positions so that he can never be got in trouble? You know what we call that? We call that fucking hedging. That's when you want to see what you can get away with. So you say whatever you can and you rely on your viewers to independently pick up which ones you're serious about based on context. And it interestingly allows you to be very manipulative. Yeah, it's called be yeah, it's called being a fucking a fucking spineless little weasel. Yeah, hedging. Yeah, it's a Tim Pool strategy. Hedging is abuse of Poe's law. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Interesting how that works, huh? Interesting how that works. But you know, it's very weird. This is a very specific tweet. And you know what's funny? Um What is this? So now there's a couple of random people fall. Oh, oh my God. Look, other, other people are turning against them. Oh my God. There's so many people. This is so ridiculous. And then of course, take, take looking at this. Then they're retweeting. They go right back to retweeting fucking terrible, uh, Republican nonsense. More stuff that's uh about the fucking sixth more fucking stuff downplaying uh downplaying problems with covid fucking fox news shit i think this one's a cnn clip so what the fuck is going on do you see the response about her pu her husband let's take a look i didn't see that one here we go this was before saying this was a joke eric erickson another giant blue check by the way uh on, by the way, this person is a blue check with 49,000 followers. This person is a blue check with 200,000 followers. Okay? 200,000 fucking followers who says, that's good parenting. Liz Mayer replies, please tell my husband who thinks I'm history's worst monster. My husband and all the internet is calling me a horrible monster. Thank you, Eric Erickson, for validating me. All you are doing is making him associate food as punishment, something he already has issues with. This is disgusting and not at all effective. So you might be thinking like, damn, let's see what the comments are like. Shall we just see what the comments are like outside of uh, outside of like the people who are roasting her? You know? Save the This one's funny from Seth Rogen. Save the valuable ones so they can pay for therapy when they're older. Oh, now I see what this tweet was about. This is the one. I love when Twitter main characters that are basically fairy story villains. When my stepchild is bad, I send her into the woods with not but a paper dress to wear. I am a good parent. Yeah, the funny thing is. Yeah, I get that the line between reality and satire is blurry right now, but please don't fall for this. Except, guess what? It's not 
this isn't trolling. This isn't trolling and this isn't satire. Haha, ha, I acted like a child abuser and people treated me like a child abuser in response. This says a lot of, about society. I am doing very valuable things. Wow, true. Makes perfect sense. When I was a kid, my parents threatened to burn my stuff because I was doing badly in school. It didn't work because I was neurodivergent. I actually got worse. You can't terrorize your way into good behavior. I remember when I was so terrified of my parent that I couldn't do basic stuff because I was in constant fight or flight and then being further punished for it. Spoiler, it results in self-harm, anxiety, and a lifetime of antidepressants. Yeah, jokes on them. I was just pretending. Yeah, it's that meme. It is that meme. So how long will it be before he figures out that all he has to do is dump his lunch in the garbage at school to avoid losing any cards? Well, see, that's the funny thing because she also admitted that she uh, punishes him at home. Pokemon go, go, go to CPS. <laughs> hey, I know you're feeling really piled on right now, but I'm really hoping you'll read my comment with an open heart. In middle school, I was the kid whose parents and doctor who thought just who thought I just wasn't wanting to eat. They tried lots of way to force the issues as you are. Luckily, none of their strategies involved literally burning my possessions, but it still fucked me up. Fast forward a few years and me dropping under 80 pounds as an eighth grader, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. The doctors and parents had no idea that that was a possibility. It took me a long time and a lot of therapy to let go of the pain of knowing that no one was really listening to me or considering the possibility that maybe the issue was bigger than just Kendall doesn't want to eat. Again, this is despite them never burning my possessions. I guess what I'm saying is I hope you'll consider the possibility there's a bigger reason he's struggling to eat enough and that reason may not reveal itself for years because I can promise you you don't want your son to someday look back and remember his mom punishing him in such an awful way for something outside of his control. But you know what's really funny about this? You want to know what's really funny about all this? Look at how look at how gentle they are. Look at how gentle they have to be in order to get try and get through to this person who's just like literally bragging about this shit. And then literally just memeing, oh, that's good parenting. Please tell my husband who thinks I'm history's worst monster. Honey, Eric Erickson says I'm right. Husband is right. He's right. Soon to be ex-husband. You are. Smart husband. So yeah, getting kind of roasted in the comments. Oh shit, you're getting beat in the retweets. Was it getting beaten in the quote retweets? Um, so let's talk about this a little bit, okay? Let's talk about this a little bit. Um, because, uh, you know, as you know, when we do a drama mama, I like to get into it. I like to find out. We got, it's, this is a little bit of a compact drama, right? It blew up this morning and everybody was reacting to it. And then the, the mom says, uh, Liz Mayer says, ah, I'm just joking. I did it for social media clout. As if that's somehow better. I think it doesn't matter if the story is actually true or not, because it does actually say something about our society. It does actually say something. Wait, Snowden quote tweeted it? For real? Is that for real? Yeah, oh my fucking God! He literally did. Every day we stray further from God. Fucking Edward Snowden. Now, I will say, I will say, I'm very, very happy to see that a lot of big, big accounts have decided to crack down on this shit. To be completely honest, this is the sort of thing, like joking, quote unquote, joking about child abuse is the kind of thing that I think that, that like when you get quote retweeted by Edward Snowden, who has what? Uh, 4.9 million followers or Seth Rogen, who has like 8 million followers. I think you deserve that ratio if you're going to make jokes about uh, severe child abuse. He tweeted about it twice. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Children of the world unite. Unironically, though. Do you want to know what's on my reading list, everybody? Do you want to know? Um, uh, do you want to know what's on my reading list? Books about youth liberation. Do you know why there's books? on my reading list about youth liberation because it's something that basically nobody talks about and the only thing that ever happens is that you get a bunch of republicans um advocating specifically for the unborn 
and no one actually talks about what it's actually like to be a child in America. You want to know what I saw yesterday that made me think about this? And this is, we're going to go on a little bit of a, ta ta uh, um, a bit of a tangent. When I get my list together, absolutely pansexual lizard. Just remind me of it in the future. I have to get my list together. I'm sure we'll talk about it again. Um, yesterday, when I was walking through town, um, I saw a kid get off the bus and climb into his, par presumably his parents' car, which had a lit up Uber light in the front of it. And, uh, and I was like, oh, wow, it struck me how many kids now, um, are, are spending like basically probably mo a lot of their days, um, riding around on their parents' second or third job as that's their life because their parents have to work so much more. Um, and that in basically every aspect of society, our, uh, like, our our, our consu hyper consumerist capitalist structure puts children into a place where they have basically no say over what they do with their lives. They are constantly at um, being controlled and being told what to do by somebody else, always. And and it's a product of parents not having time to be parents, being forced into working all the time. Uh, they're not being enough affordable or or even accessible childcare. So so kids just kind of get jerked around. And then they get pushed uh, into mandatory schooling structures, which treat them poorly. Interesting how that goes, right? But I want to talk about this a little bit. Because I find it very interesting that somebody could get it in their mind to even tweet a tweet like this. That anybody could even think that that's a good idea. And isn't it strange how people treat children in America? How people, like, how many people here have gotten the feeling that a lot of parents in America view their children as possessions? Can we see that? Uh, maybe you, actually, let's ask a vote. Did your, did your parents do that? All right, 39 votes were cast, and we had a 51% on the side of yes. I think that's disgusting. I think the fact that 51% of my random chat poll can pull off that their parents treated them like property is is an abhorrent number my parents did my my parents you know something that was said to my parents all the time my parents said this to me all the time um uh hey dear mama i'm still a minor and i'm over controlled in my house for my age it's fucking annoying as hell plus i've already been exposed to harmful parts of the internet and that, that they won't help that they can't help me with yeah that happens all the time um and also uh one of the things that one of the things that i was told frequently was stuff like, I brought you into this world, I can take you out of it. And that was used as a threat. Stuff like that. The idea that I was literally owned. Um, when, one of the things that my dad basically tried to use against me. Yeah, it's a literal death threat. And now, of course, you all know, because those of you who watch my channel probably know a bit more about me. I have a letter on my shelf over here, which is a literal death threat from one of my family members. Um about me being gay so i was not uh you know afraid of that sort of shit but another thing that happened was um that when i didn't do what exactly what my parents wanted me to do they would threaten to ruin me financially because see they encouraged me to go to a good school they basically set me up that i needed to go to college and do what they wanted and if not i would get nothing i would get no support and i did i ended up living in a in a spare room with my friend of my friend's spare room because they wanted to leverage um literally my living situation my ability to do anything my um support in getting school loans they leveraged that to try and control me to stop being trans i'm not kidding you i'm dead serious so it's very strange to me i can think of almost nothing more terrifying and horrible than um the fear that your own mother is going to destroy your most treasured um, possessions just because you're not eating. I think that's really sad. And I understand that there's a desire to get people to eat, right? Because you need food, especially if you're underweight. Being underweight is dangerous. I get it. I get wanting to be a parent who wants to feed, who wants your child to eat. But if they're not eating, if you're struggling that hard um if you if your if your child is struggling that hard to eat you need to look deeper do you want to know something that I, that it happened in my household that is something that i i hate to think about but it happened all the time 
one of my siblings was autistic but undiagnosed so one of my my younger siblings was un undiagnosed autistic and um and would regularly get screamed at to finish his foods and um that is pretty fucked and it was i mean really screamed at there were times where where my sibling was stuck um at the dinner table for hours being punished because it turns out they had um they had texture issues with most foods and that's all it was it was texture issues that they couldn't communicate because it didn't make sense to them that other people didn't have that problem and so my parents would scream at this at my sibling about this and it's not that my it's not that my sibling wasn't hungry it's just that they didn't know how to communicate their tactile issues and you want to know what else that happened to me once too i and i never had food tactility issues but one time my dad made a meal that he thought was very special and i didn't like it i just i i i put it in my mouth and it tasted very bad i just i couldn't and i wasn't rude or anything but my dad being a control freak uh would uh, freaked out and he's like you need to eat this food like i spent a lot of time making this for you and he eventually took a spoon and shoved the food into my mouth with some mango chutney on it and it made me gag because the mango chutney was shoved into my mouth with the food that I didn't like and I gagged and that only made him more angry and uh as a result of that for most of my life I couldn't enjoy chutney at all love any type because it would make me it would remind me of that shit and I would gag just because of that association doesn't that sound terrible and this is all too common and, you know, uh, this is not me saying that, like, every parent has to always be perfect or that parenting is not a, a difficult process where there's um, mistakes will be made and people will make mistakes and whatever. Of course, of course, it's going to happen. But this goes beyond mistakes. This goes this goes this speaks to um, this speaks to something about the way our society looks at children and the way our society looks at children in a lot of ways is with um resentment does that make sense like a lot of people look at children with resentment our society doesn't have space for children uh increasingly places for children to go play um uh places for children to to uh meet with their friends without having to be hovered over by a parent at all times a place where children can learn to socially interact on their own these places increasingly do not exist they have been removed. We've been talking about this sort of thing a lot, but we haven't talked about how it affects children. An aunt tried to force feed me deviled eggs at a family function, says Silent. I had bruises on my face. My grandmother, her mother, told her she wasn't welcome in the house after that. Well, I'm glad that your grandmother did that. I'm glad your grandmother uh, held up, held that up. Good faith actor says, not to be the resident boomer here, but there's two sides to this. Parents are under a lot of scrutiny for their kids regarding both their behavior and their well-being. Also, a lot of parents aren't exactly in the position to give their, their kids whatever they want to eat. I think the kids are being impacted by broader issues rather than it being a child-specific issue. I agree with you. I agree there are broader issues. There are a couple of issues, right? First of all is the fact that so many Americans live in food deserts, which forces them to eat very, very limited foods. So parents don't have a lot of options. They don't have a lot of flexibility. You kind of got to eat what you get. And if you happen to have a digestive issue like Crohn's disease, it can be a literal agonizing experience. If you're a child who has an undiagnosed dietary th problem, um, like an allergic reaction, your parents might just keep feeding you food that makes you feel sick all the time. That's a terrible life to live. And... Uh, it would be easier if we had a society that put more care into food availability. That's a systemic issue that seriously affects this. Um, and also, you know, we would we would be a better society if like the schools that our society makes Amer that makes American students go to had nutritious alternative meals. There wasn't just one meal every day. And some schools do. 
Some schools do have multiple food options so that children can eat something if one thing doesn't agree with their stomach or whatever. But we're not talking about kids being like, unreasonably picky here we're talking about kids who some of whom have dietary issues some of them have tech you know have uh, have texture issues these are reasonable things to have an adult that has this is able to make a decisions in many cases to uh to alleviate their suffering but kids are just forced to deal with it a lot of the time and additionally what's worse is that it's all too common in our society to see it as okay to punish a child to punish like by burning Pokemon cards. Can you imagine something like, just put yourself in the shoes of a, of a child, okay? Actually, we can do this together. Every single person in this audience, I know for a fact that every single person in this audience has something that's precious to them. An item or a stuffed animal or uh, a picture or a piece of art or or uh, a possession and not necessarily a cat but everybody has a possession that's special to them and i want you to think about for just a second what it would feel like if somebody who you have no choice in in being associated with just because of the way the world is this person has authority is given authority over you and they set your thing on fire before your eyes you watch them destroy that thing and it's gone forever and you're never going to get it back i want you to think about how bad that experience is and now that's you as probably uh I, I think the youngest person in this audience is probably like 15 so from 15 up now think about a seven-year-old because remember the context of these tweets is a seven-year-old age seven Wow. And you want to know what else gets worse? Now, basically every single piece of tech, not only does it have uh, tools for like limiting what kids can get access to, but it has ways of surveilling kids. Child surveillance is a regular part of our technology now. So not only is it that kids are being like, you know, you know, parental locks, but there are tools sold all over the market for tracking your children. There are tools offered by Apple that allow you to put every single person that you in your family on a map and just keep a track of what they're doing and how long they've been doing it. And people use these tools. And guess what? You want to know what's else? You want to know what's else? Wow, why am I fucking that up? Do you want to know what else? These things have integration with smart homes. Literally, the nightmare fucking movie that everybody jokes about. The Smart House. Everybody remember that fucking movie? Remember that movie, the joke about the, the Smart House that becomes evil? We live in that world. We actually live in that world. And uh, no joke, you can do create. You want to know wild shit that you can do? I won't tell you how I know this right now because I don't really want to dive into a personal story. But did you know that there are tools that allow you to remotely control aspects of your house from even when you're not there? So say that you've got a kid that you don't that, you know, maybe maybe uh, maybe maybe your kid's not behaving so well. Maybe your kid keeps turning up the heat when they're home because they're cold. You can lock that heat and control it remotely. I've had that used against me. I'm not kidding you. I'm, I'm not kidding you. I've literally had that used against me by somebody with a smart house. Keeping you in the cold and then turning the heat up when they get home. Parents are able to get access to every message their children send. They are able and, and it's always under the guise of protection. Always, even if it's not really about protection, even if it's not really about anything, they'll spy on everything they say. And it happens and com companies facilitate it because it's considered normal in our society to uh, to to surveil and treat children like criminals in waiting. 
and not everybody does this not every parent does this as we know as we can see but a shocking amount do a shocking amount do use these tools and they're growing every year and they're being used by people who think it's okay to burn their child's Pokemon cards as punishment for having digestive issues. You think that maybe if your child isn't eating a literal basic, a basic human need, that there might be something deeper than them being bad? Isn't that an absolutely absurd thing to conclude? Isn't that wild? To conclude that like, oh, my child must be bad because they're struggling to eat. What's the story behind this? Well, it was it was an, a, a tweet that was going uh, viral. Capo says, also, Internet of Things devices are notoriously insane, uh, insecure. One company had an, uh, an Internet of Things crib so you could rock your baby from from your crib, from your I think you meant from your bed, maybe from your crib, I guess. Hackers quickly found an exploit to break it, override the motor, and could easily shake a baby to death using it. No actual children were hurt, but this sends a strong message. Yes, it does. There's a there's an account, or at least there used to be an account called Internet of Shit. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I got it. Let's see if we can find some of these things. Internet of Shit. I, use, I actually got to refollow these ones because this is fuck, fucking funny. They just retweet Internet of Things, th uh, Internet of Things, things going wrong. Here we go. Here's a retweet of a massive account. A programmer looks like can't set up the washer dryer bot in Europe because my iPhone's region is U.S. The Hoover UK app is not available in the U.S. App Store. If that's not Internet of Shit, I'm not sure what is. You literally can't use your washer and dryer because your iPhone's region settings are wrong. I was just on the phone with someone from Facebook who described employees unable to enter buildings this morning to begin to evaluate the extent of the outage because their badges weren't working to access doors and they use smart door access. Yeah, do we all remember the Kellyanne Conway situation? I did a, dr a drama mama on that. A perfect example of, of a parent abusing surveillance against their, uh, against their kid. Am I am I familiar with the Internet of D's technology? Of course I am. Internet of D's nuts. There you go. Owned. Here we go. Pressing both at the same time takes a screenshot. Okay, that's a joke. This is obviously a joke. <laughs> okay, that's good. Some of these are just memes. Amazon's new AI-powered cameras are penalizing delivery drivers for driving mistakes they didn't make, and drivers are losing income. It's the nightmare scenario that AI experts frequently warn about. I talk to drivers about how the AI is punishing them. Yo, imagine that. Imagine be having to drive around for Amazon all day, every day, and then you just get your pay doc directly. Holy shit. Let's keep going. I wish they had also created a diverse data set of rugs so that it didn't confuse black stripes with cliffs and I could finally get my entire house cleaned. It's a containment circle. It's a containment circle for the for the machine spirit. Yes. 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 It's a containment. <laughs> it's a salt circle. I love it. He's a demon. Yes, we know it. He's a demon. He's either a demon or a djinn. One of the two. Which one is it? I love this one. This is a great Sean tweet. I can't believe a Sean tweet ended up over here. Wow. Talk about a small world. Self-driving cars will have to answer split-second ethical decisions, instantly calculating the worth of the lives of people around them. Can an AI solve the trolley problem? Self-driving cars in reality. I swerved onto the sidewalk because I thought the moon was a stop sign true literally true though we watch that on stream we watch there's these huge compilations on youtube that you can watch of people's teslas making insane decisions because as it turns out people were being sold things when people when when everybody said that smart cars are gonna are gonna save the world everybody will have a smart car because it'll be so safe you were listening to salespeople. Salespeople. people 
Facebook's Bosworth says glasses with cameras on it will be the norm in 10 years. So this is a this is a head of Facebook hardware that says that glasses with cameras built in will be the norm in 10 years. Internet of shit says we are going to make this happen whether you like it or not. True. Of course they will. That means that they can fucking figure out where you're going at all times. Yeah, no thank you. Keep that fucking shit off of me. Sorry to sound like, sorry to sound like a fucking boomer, but guess what, guys? Some technology sucks. Some technology fucking sucks, and that's one of them. We live in a society that basically worships technology, and it's stupid. Let's keep going. Let's keep going about this, because I want to keep talking about this. Simply incredible. All five of the quote-unquote third-party privacy and consumer groups Facebook said it consulted before rolling out its Ray-Ban alternate reality camera glasses that to ensure pri privacy was baked in are all funded by Facebook. Every single one. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. Browsing the web 2021. Let's watch this video of someone trying to browse the web in 2021. Here we go. You go to a website. It's going to play. Here we go. Oh, look at all those pop-ups. You all know the pain of this. Look at that shit. Woohoo! Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Oh, mmm. Mmm, delicious pop-ups. Literally reminds me of, of going onto your grandma's virus-infested computer. <laughs> what the fuck our fridge just emailed us to say that we opened its door too many times in the past month door open count frequent door openings require your unit to run more often and may prevent your unit from maintaining the set temperature frost increased noise and low ice production may also be experienced fresh food 44 daily average stop eating so much you violated the computer Glasses that have a terms of service. Incredible. Facebook is making camera glasses. They have LED warning lights so that bystanders know you're taking a video. I taped it over. A Facebook exec told me this was a violation of the terms of service of the glasses. Oh my god. Facebook is making camera glasses and it's a violation of terms of service to put a piece of tape on your own glasses. Lamau! Just incredible. Just fucking incredible. Uh, Capo says, in my experience, most Internet of Things devices are put are put on the Internet first. Then they circle back and decide what was the good idea and what, what to do about it. Akira Tinakel says, it's fucked up regarding the parenting to topic. I remember seeing more than once a clip my mom and her boyfriend laughed at about and thought was justified. It was a young adult still living with his parents, not being able to keep up with work. So his parents took all of his possessions, his gaming system, and all his games and went over it with a mower while he screamed and frantically tried to stop them but wasn't able. While the mom stood by and gave a sort of, well, you had it coming. You Does anybody remember that, um, that story from... Uh, what was it called? Um, uh, am I a little quiet? Sorry about that. I can boost up my audio. I think it was because I was yelling. Um, does anybody remember? Does anybody remember the uh, the the like dad of five or whatever? Does anybody remember that? Hold on. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think H three H three busted them. Daddy O five. Yeah, that guy. Want to watch that real quick? There's a video about this. So, oh, where's the video that I watched about it? These guys were bad. Here we go. Phil DeFranco did a video on it. I wonder if you can watch. I don't think I can react to Phil DeFranco without getting. Wait, I'm getting taking ads off this. So I might be able to watch it. Oh, here's the H3 one. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, here's playlists of it. There's so many playlists. Yeah, so let me show you. So some of you may remember this guy, Daddy05, who made videos. What the way that they punished their children's, um, their children, was to record 
them destroying their pre their possessions and then putting that on the internet as punishment. And they made a lot of money doing that, by the way. Like a lot of money on YouTube recording their children, uh, destroying their children's stuff and laughing at the child. Yes, they did get two of their children taken away by CPS in the end. And guess what, by the way, just so you know, those fucking kids, those kids, they went to school. They went to school and school couldn't do fucking shit about it. At 11, my friend's mom, uh, Vermin said, Vermin Hand says, at 11, my friend's mom decided she was too old for the stuffed animals she had collected and made her watch them be thrown out. Then her mom, when her mom went out, she stole a small chihuahua plush out of the trash and carried it around even in high school in her backpack to protect it. That is trauma. Yes, that is. Taking something that is precious to, to, to a child and destroying it like that is absolutely trauma, trauma inducing. So, you know, we've delved into the drama. We've talked about a couple of the aspects of it. And honestly, this is one of those times where at the end of a drama mama, I don't have much to say, except this is bad. Whether it's a joke or not, even if this is completely made up, even if it's completely made up by this person, the fact that there were other people who were clapping it on and who were encouraging it shows that there is a sizable amount of our population that truly believes it's okay to be cruel to your child because they deserved it. Which sometimes deserving it means struggling with your food. A thing that humans need, that we're biologically driven to, to need and we only don't eat when we're sick or not feeling well or otherwise impeded from eating our food simone says my dad once made me choose the dowel he was going to hit me with i'm really sorry about that that's terrible you should never be subjected to that that's terrible so the takeaway here is pokemon you fucked up you fu you fucked up big time you really fucked up. And I do hope that it was made up. But even if it is made up, you still fucked up. Because a bunch of other people, a bunch of the Matt Walsh types out there, those types who believe that a, that an iron hand is the way to, to keep your children in order, uh, are going to go and, and act on this and, th and be vindicated in it. Be vindicated in their behavior. Trans girl Lily says, my mom gave away all of my Bakugan when I was eight without telling me or my brother. We just came home and saw our favorite toys missing. The feeling of emptiness after that source of joy was taken away is something I can still remember. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's terrible. This shit is mean. It's horrible. When you're a kid, like, that shit sucks. And it especially sucks. Keep in mind that, like, children can deal with loss, right? Like, sometimes you have a pet die, and that can be hurtful and painful. But this is being inflicted on you by someone you love someone you trusted someone you were secure with or at least you're supposed to be and isn't it odd how our society is structured in such a way with a huge focus on the nuclear family that children have no choice but to be essentially completely reliant on parents who have 100 percent authority over their lives can literally destroy their things often harm them literally physically and there's nothing there's almost nothing they can do about it except for perhaps seek help from a bureaucracy that they don't know how to navigate that often helps parents more the reason i have a complex relation to my executive function is because my father would commonly shout at me for hours at a time about my laziness i got yelled at about laziness and i was not a lazy kid not even in the slightest. Do you know when I started working? I started working a job when I was 15. And from the moment I got my first job, I worked summers. I worked during school. I was not a lazy kid. And I would get yelled at about laziness for st stuff like being forgetful. It's horrible. It's very bad. And it damages your ability to, to live the life that you want to live. It damages your ability to pursue things that you love. I don't know why that's being muted. Hold on. Baby boy says, Demon Mama, it's really bad here in Colombia. When I was younger and went to my friends' houses, sometimes I was shocked to see how their parents were. 
Um, also, the horror stories were never ending. There were parents I knew that would relentlessly beat their children with hard leather. Some were burned or traumatized with religious threats, and some were, would do utterly fucked things I only knew about them. Child abuse is horrible, and conservatism is a plague. Yeah, keep in mind that conservatism protects the structures that allow for this. Conservatism is directly in opposite. Thank you for your comment, baby boy. Um, conservatism is in direct opposition to, with ch with uh, with youth liberation. Yeah, do you remember? I remember that too, Eddie. I remember conversations on talk radio about spanking, and all of the conservatives, um, uh, all of the conservatives were constantly coming out in defense of spanking, even though we know like on a studied level that spanking does not accomplish what they want it to accomplish. Parents forcing their kids to call them sir or ma'am is super fucked. Yes, it is super fucked. It's very, very fucked. You want to know, you want to know who you can, who it's okay uh, for you to call sir or ma'am? You're dom. You're dom that you've engaged in a consensually, uh, a consensual relationship with. Your inner, your your mommy, who 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 you you decided to be in a relationship with, you can call them, ma'am, or you can call your daddy, sir, that you chose. But somebody you're forced to? Absolutely not. That's absurd. Do you guys remember when we watched Matt Walsh's um video about hugging children? Should we revisit that real quick? I want to revisit that real quick. Um, no, it's okay, baby boy. I get it. It's the chat was being weird. I didn't catch it. Do you guys remember that Matt Walsh's thing? Um, I have it on my channel here. Let's see. I'll pull it up on my channel. Where's the search? Here we go. Do you guys remember how weird that was? Yeah, look at this. Here we go. We can we can review the past. Let's travel back to the past. Let's see how much brain power Matt Walsh can can scrub up this time. Let's find out, everybody. Let's do it. Wasn't that drug outlawed in the 80s? Well, not to I consumed so, at the time wasn't perfect either but one thing i do remember is that children's shows were broadly speaking shows for children they had childish themes okay. and ideas okay. and plots nice okay children's shows for children okay oh I get thank it. you the kid the i get it the moral at the end of every story was always something like sharing is good or learning is fun okay and this all made a lot of sense. Oh, this is the part where he talks about a party this. with Here family and friends. Okay, yeah. And you see, of course, there we've got uh, the interracial gay couple. We've got Sick. the interracial disabled couple. Well, one one member Sick. of the couple's disabled. Sick. You got to get all Sick. the representation there. Does he think? Wait, does he think that like? Does he think that like, like, interracial relationships aren't normal, or that like disabled people don't exist? And um, that's, I don't see any furries. I don't see anyone who's apparently transsexual or even transgender. Uh, Dude, what? Super Mike with the $5. Thank you. Let's see if we can get the to the part. Of, much super. So that's, that's a problem, but we'll keep. Or, or trans for that matter. That's okay, says dad. You don't have to give hugs. If Here you we don't go. Here we go. True, you do not. You do not have to. Wow, what a surprise. No, you do not have to hug your relatives or do anything that your relatives want. But this is true, though. This is actually true. Like, th this is how you teach a kid that it's not okay for creepy Uncle Joe to fucking get him. For creepy Uncle Matt to get him. Oh, wait, Grandpa. is this the Matt Walsh moment? Is this the one? Is this the one? Is this the moment? Here we go. This is the one. Violate my kids consent. Here we go. I, Come on, let me try something. I violate my kids consent all the time In the sense that I force them to do things they don't want to do A, a classic a classic by jazz dog that's from that video that's from the video we were just watching like literally That is from that video he talks about how he forces them to, to hug and kiss their his relatives and he doesn't give a shit. And he also talks about how he threat he will threaten them with physical physical uh reprisal if they don't. Self-titled theocratic fascist with a lot of followers who follows the exact logic that this person tweeted out. Yeah, this is abusive. This is abusive. 
Yeah. And this type of behavior enables the worst type of people in our society. Because not teaching kids consent means the kids don't, kids are pressured constantly by their family. It's your family, of course. There is a power dynamic going on there. There absolutely is. It's wild shit. Fucking wild shit. Yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt Walsh calls himself a theocratic fascist on Facebook or on uh, Twitter. Don't believe me? Maybe he took it down. Nope, he does. He still has it there. Take a look. Theocratic fascist. Yeah, no joke. So, <laughs> he's memeing though, right? He's just memeing. It's a meme. It's a meme. It's to get the, it's to trigger the libs. Vermin says, holy fuck, I remember visiting my family as adult. I was reluctantly watching TV with my mother and grandmother. My mother rubbed my leg and I asked her to stop. Um, Vermin says, then she did it harder and the other joined in laughing. So I snapped and told them to fuck off and left the room. They got super whiny about it. The next day, my grandmother said, there's something wrong with you if you don't like being touched by family. And I just left the house since I was leaving for, since I was visiting for college. Lamau, get fucked, old bitch. Yeah, that's fucked. That's incredibly fucked that anybody would ever do that to you. That is a violation of your, that is a violation of consent. That is disgusting. And people think they can get away with it because of nuclear family nonsense. For your own good. It's very fucked. I'm sorry. I, I, my family sucks ass too. You're, we're, we are, we are, uh, non binies in arms together on that. Yeah, I understand that. I don't talk to any of my family either. Uh, you know some of the stories about my family. I've talked about them. so creepy and you know there are there are like very minor ways um in which like this unfolds like you know like your grandma going mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you're like ah, uh, and you might not really like it that much and whatever um and that's like a really minor one but we now know uh we now know for i mean we know for sure that there are people who abuse that all the time fucking matt walsh is one of them Fucking Pokemon is one of them. The idea that children sh should have no rights, essentially, that they should just, you could just burn their most treasured possessions and relish and boast about it on social media. How do you think that feels? How do you think that feels for the child? How do you think the, ch the child is going to feel years from now knowing that, uh, that, that like that child's mom the moment of fame was bragging about tor about torturing the child emotionally. 